There are literally hundreds, if not thousands of different lures out there on the market. But if I could only have one lure for the rest of my life, it would be a jig. A jig has probably caught more big bass than just about any other lure on the planet. And it can work from 30 feet of water to one foot of water and in all different types of cover. But probably one of the best things about a jig is you can catch bass on it year round. So today I wanna give you not one, but two different patterns that you can catch bass on jigs in every season of the year. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. Now, speaking of jigs, you can actually save some money right now on some some really awesome jigs at sportsmansoutfitters.com. Today I'm going to talk about the Strike King structure jig a lot as well as the Freedom Tackle jig, but no matter what jig you like, you may be able to find it at a discounted price at sportsmansoutfitters.com. So click that link down below in the description and pick you up some jigs. Now I've always been pretty partial to fishing a jig. I always like to keep a jig tied on because I fish a lot of tournaments and it seems like if you can get on a good jig bite, you can win a lot of tournaments on a jig. But during the springtime, this is probably my favorite time of the year to fish a jig. It just seems to outproduce a lot of other lures, especially when it comes to quality. Another thing that happens during the springtime, which makes jigs even that much better, typically when that water is kind of around 50 to 55 degrees, you're going to have a crawfish spawn and bass will feed heavily on the crawfish that expose themselves. Now, like I said, I want to give you two different patterns for the springtime that you can fish a jig. Jig. So the first pattern that is probably one of my favorite things to do in the springtime is find groups of bass on secondary points. A lot of times during the winter, bass spend some time kind of near the main lake. But during the spring, as the water temperature starts to warm up, the bass are going to start making their way in the creeks. And a lot of times you can actually find the biggest schools of the year on secondary points that are kind of outside of the major spawning pockets. Now there's a lot of different lures that can actually work on these secondary points. I've caught bass cranking these secondary points using a jerk bait on these secondary points, but one of my favorite ways to catch them is on a jig. Now a lot of times when it comes to jigs, I keep things pretty simple. I like my green pumpkin jigs and I like my black and blue jig. I'm either going to go with green pumpkin or black and blue depending on the water clarity or the conditions. You know, if we have dark water or muddy water or dark conditions, a lot of times I'm going to go with a black and blue. If I have cleaner water and sunny skies, a lot of times I'm going to go with a more natural like a green pumpkin. Now a couple of jigs that you can use on those secondary points are like the Strike King structure jig, which I'm holding right here, and the Freedom Tackle structure jig. Now both of these jigs are labeled as structure jigs, which means you might think that they're going to be used kind of offshore, but the thing about both these jigs is they come through cover extremely well and they're very versatile. They both kind of have that arky style jig head. It's a little bit flatter. You can actually skip both of these jigs very well. But during the spring, most of the time I'm gonna go with a half ounce or a three quarter ounce, depending on how deep that secondary point is. And what I'm looking for a lot of times is a hard bottom. Now that hard bottom could be rock or it could be something like shell. Now it seems like if that secondary point has some hard bottom and you see some bait fish around, that is a spot you're going to catch them during the spring. Now, when that water temperature starts to rise during the spring, once it kind of gets above that 55 degree mark, I really like to start swimming a jig around a visible cover. A lot of times I'm going to be focusing on areas where I think bass are moving up to spawn. So this might be little pockets and coves. If those pockets and coves have some grass or some wood cover or even some rock, swimming a jig around that cover is a great way to catch a lot of bass. The other thing about swimming a jig is that sometimes if the bass actually start spawning, maybe that water temperature it gets into the 60s and the bass are actually spawning, sometimes you will actually see bass kind of wake or kind of swirl on that jig. And although they might not eat the jig, you are visibly going to be able to see them where then you can go back and maybe bed fish if that's something you want to do. Now, speaking of swimming a jig, another thing that kind of happens later in the spring is you're going to have a shad spawn. And when you have a shad 
dance bond, a white swim jig is hard to beat. Now, summertime is probably one of my favorite times of the year to be out there fishing. I would much rather it be 95 degrees outside than 15 degrees like it is right now for me. Now, there are two really distinct patterns that I absolutely love to use a jig for during the summertime. Now, the first pattern is going to be for lakes that have grass in them. So if you have submergent vegetation like hydrilla, or if you have coontail, or especially if you have milfoil in your lakes, flipping and pitching a jig to those deep outside grass lines is by far one of my favorite ways to catch a bass. Now, one of the biggest things that I have seen when it comes to flipping and pitching grass like milfoil and hydrilla is you really kind of want to have the right style of jig. Now, one of my favorite jigs that I've used a lot is the Stealth Fighter Jig. I think it's made by Outcast Tackle. And this is a tungsten jig that was developed by Seth Fighter for this exact purpose, for flipping deep grass. Now, the only thing I don't love is the jigs are fairly expensive. I think they're seven or eight dollars, which again, it's a tungsten jig. But but another jig that I've kind of fallen in love with is this Freedom Tackle Flippin' Jig. Now this is a lead jig, so it's a pretty inexpensive jig, but it has really high quality components. And again, this jig, like that fighter jig, was made to go in and out of grass, and it does it extremely well. Now, the one thing you should know about the fighter jig and this jig is they are really meant for grass, okay? If you're gonna pitch this jig into wood cover, it doesn't come through as good as some of your Arky style jigs, kind of like the jigs I talked about earlier. But when it comes to grass, these two jigs are very hard to beat. One of the biggest things that you want to do when it comes to fishing that grass, that deep outside grass lines, is try to find a point in the grass or try to find a pocket in the grass. It seems like if you can kind of find those little points and pockets, that's where a lot of those bass are gonna be. But the other big thing, especially if you're fishing in the northern part of the country, if you can find rock bottom, rock bottom where that comes right up against that grass, that is a dynamite spot where you're gonna find a lot of big largemouth and smallmouth at times. Now, the second summer pattern when it comes to fishing a jig is actually called stroking a jig. I have not done a video on this channel about stroking a jig, but I do plan to do it during this summer. Now, when it comes to stroking a jig, the big thing here is you're trying to make bass react to the jig. And what I typically like to do is stroke a jig on offshore structures. So a lot of times this is going to be on ledges or on points or on humps that are offshore. A lot of times when bass first move to that offshore structure, you can catch them on pretty much any lure you throw out there. Deep diving crankbaits, big shaky heads. But as that summer kind of continues to go on, a lot of those bass have seen so many lures that making them react is really key. So that's when I start stroking a jig. Now to stroke a jig, basically you're gonna cast that jig across that point or on that ledge, and you're really gonna aggressively pop that bait up and let it fall down. You're fishing it a lot like you would fish a big flutter spoon. And when you pop that jig, a lot of times that's what's gonna make those bass react. And as that jig falls, bam, they nail it. Now, when it comes to the fall, I have seen it more times than not that the fall can actually be a pretty tough time of the year to fish, especially early fall. When you kind of have that summer to fall transition, it can be really, really tough fishing. But one thing that I have found to be extremely consistent during the fall is fishing around docks. It just seems like to me that bass will live on certain docks year round. So when you're really kind of struggling to go out there and catch fish, if you just fish enough docks throughout the day, go from dock to dock to dock, you're either going to start to pick up on a pattern like I'm catching a bass on a dock on every point that I come to, or maybe it's the ones that are at the back of the pocket, whatever it may be, if you can kind of establish a pattern with those docks, you're going to catch a lot of fish when it's really, really tough to catch them other ways. The big thing you want to remember when fishing a dock is you want like an arky style jig head. Jig heads that are flat like that on the top really skip the best, and you want to be able to skip that jig is far up into a dock as possible. Now, as fall continues and the water temperature starts to drop, one of my favorite ways to catch a bass is on a spinnerbait. Now, I know that this video is not about spinnerbaits, but just give me a sec. A 
lot of times when I'm looking for spinnerbait fish in the fall, I'm gonna go up the lake and into different creek arms that have bait fish and some stained water. If that water is pretty muddy and you only have a foot or a foot and a half of visibility, that's typically when I'm gonna pick up a spinnerbait. But if you have water visibility that is two foot, three foot, four foot, sometimes what I found is that using a jig like a swim jig and fishing it higher in the water column like you would a spinnerbait is a great alternative when that water is clearer. Now, one thing that I've noticed and what I just kind of alluded to is that I've seen bass suspend a lot during the fall. You might be fishing a lay down that is in five or six foot of water, but those fish are only a foot or two down in it. And so that's why I like like to swim that jig higher in the water column because if you flip a jig in there, sometimes you might miss fish because it just falls past them too quickly. We finally made it to winter. And if you are fishing during winter and your water doesn't freeze over, even if it gets into the upper 30s and, and low 40s, bass will absolutely still hit a jig. Now, one of the best places to catch bass during wintertime months and in really, really cold water is on bluff walls. Now, typically when I'm looking for a bluff, I'm kind of looking for the bluffs that are on the main lake. And what I've noticed a lot during winter months is that bass tend to like to move more vertically than they do horizontally. If the weather changes, it gets extremely cold, you know, they might only have to move five foot down to really be in a comfort zone where if they were to be on a very flat bank, they might have to move 50 or 60 yards to get to that same five or six foot of water that is their comfort zone. So a bluff wall is an easy place for them to move vertically. Now, the thing is, is that some bluffs will extend for miles. So one thing that I like to target is bluff end. And a bluff end is basically where that bluff ends. Usually what happens is you have another creek that kind of comes into that main body and that's where that bluff hits and that is a perfect place where you can catch a lot of bass during the winter. Now probably the biggest key here is really finding bluffs that have bait. And even though your jig doesn't always look like a bait fish down there, I just think that a jig is a great bait that just works during winter months. Now kind of going along the same line of things, bluffs are a great option, but not all bass are going to go to the main lake. You're going to have a lot of bass that actually kind of hang out in major creek arms. Now, sometimes you will have little bluffs in those creek arms, but sometimes all you need is a channel swing bank. Anywhere you have that creek channel that swings and hits that bank, if you have some brush and some rock there, that can be a great place to catch bass in the winter on a jig. Now, this isn't the first video I've done on jigs. And if you wanna watch another video I did on big mistakes that guys make with a jig, you can click on that video link right there. Don't forget to check out sportsmansoutfitters.com. Comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.